Let's run off with some track and field. Garth Gale is the new president of the J3As after a landslide victory over Olympian Donald Quarry at the elections held at the National Arena today. More in this report. Gale, who has served with local track and field's governing body for two decades, will now assume the helm following an overwhelming victory at the polls on Saturday. He defeated independent challenger, Olympian and legendary former sprinter Donald Quarry by 208 votes, 236 to 28. Gale's entire slate was elected as Marie Tavares for the post of Honorary Secretary and Leroy Cook for the post of Director of Records, also fought off challenges from independent candidates Anthony Davis and Wayne Long. Tavares had a resounding win tallying 210 votes to Davis's 50 to become Honorary Secretary, while Cook had a 14-vote margin over Long, 135 to 121. Gale says he will be beginning the work immediately. We are planning already our first meeting. I've just given the instructions to my team. And in short, in the week coming, we will be meeting. We are going to ensure that we begin the work that we would have indicated in our manifesto. We also, as I said again, will be meeting and working with the government. I want to stress that. Meeting and working with the government to ensure that all, all is well and a successful return to track and field here in Jamaica. In the meantime, losing candidate Quarry says he still feels pleased about what he was able to accomplish despite the margin of defeat. I still feel I've accomplished a lot because I, had, I have sensitized the public, corporate Jamaica, and especially the rest of the members as to what really goes on in the J3s. The voting did not demonstrate numbers for me to win, but I'm confident that they heard what I had to say. They'll have time now to think about it. And also, I will have the opportunity to look at some of the things that I've learned how this election ran. As to whether he will work with Quarry going forward, Gail says the door is always open. We have been working with Mr. Quarry in the past, and so there's no reason why we can't work, we won't be working with him. We are a group, we are here about the, the, the development and of, uh, of track and field. So we will be working with all members. We're not, no one will be barred. All comments, all suggestions, everyone that's willing to make a contribution to the development of the sport of track and field will be welcome. And Quarry says service to his country will always be a priority for him. I've always helped Jamaica athletics through the J3s or just through me. So I will decide how I will do it, but I will always help Jamaica athletics. Ian Forbes will serve as first vice president, Lincoln Eatman second vice president, Michael Freighter, third vice president, and Vilma Charlton, fourth vice president. All were elected unopposed. Gail takes over from Dr. Warren Blake, who served two full terms at the helm and did not seek re-election. Each term lasts four years. In the meantime, a couple of renowned local coaches have weighed in with contrasting views on Gail's election as president of local track and field's governing body. Now, veteran former MVP head coach Stephen Francis says the election is not very consequential as the association has no real bearing on how the sport is run. The, the J3 is, is one of those lucky federations that really has nothing much to do. You know, the development of the sport is taken care of by ISA and the high school on the one hand. And the clubs, MVP, racers, sprint tech, etc., plus the American colleges on the other. So, but um, essentially, what do we want them to do? Just don't get into the way, don't create uh, difficulties. And so long as that doesn't happen, then I think everybody's fine. But current national senior head coach and the sprint tech boss Maurice Wilson says he thinks the administration has every chance of being successful. The manifesto is a good one, but it's for implementation. So once the implementation is there, they should do well. 
but I expect a lot from this new administration. Well, the first 100 days is that he has to put a structure in place that will facilitate youth development and also find a way to reach out to the present or the current athletes at the senior level that are having difficulties because of the pandemic.